How's it going ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Strictly Nintendo where I wanted to take a look at Nintendo's overall E3 performance. And yes, I do believe that when you take a look at the big picture, they actually had a very solid showing. Now, I do stand behind my statement that the digital event was lackluster because there was just as much uninteresting content as there was interesting content. I do stand behind my statement that there were some disappointing parts and I do stand behind my statements that all the temper tantrums were uncalled for. You know, what I want to get into real quick is I want to clarify some things. I want to clarify where I felt they missed the mark, where I felt they were disappointing, and what I meant by they're not advertising. And this is all intertwined. And, you know, us hardcore Nintendo fans, we're going to be in the know. We're going to be watching all the directs. We're going to be following them on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. You know, our feeds are going to be loaded with Nintendo news, um, Nintendo-centric news sites and journalist sites. We're going to be following various developers and publishers like Platinum and Atlas and uh, Valhalla and so forth. So we're going to be in the know. And the thing about E3 is not necessarily communicating just to us Nintendo fans. It's more so about communicating to those who like Nintendo, but, you know, are on the fence, um, maybe interested in a Wii U, don't have one yet, and they're waiting for that big content, uh, people who are newcomers to gaming and are looking for value, or people who are just, they could be persuaded to invest in Nintendo hardware. And like Reggie said, you know, and has said several times, software builds the value and moves the hardware. Without the software, you don't have the install base. And I think they missed the mark in really communicating the value of the software and the hardware to those who aren't hardcore Nintendo fans. You know, what I think they could have done and really kind of driven things home is pack in more content. You know, extend the digital event by 10 minutes, make it a full hour, and dedicate like five minutes of it to a virtual console indie and third party. They really didn't cover that. I still believe that they really should have covered Fatal Frame and Devil's Third, but you know, if they would have had a five minute segment where they listed five major virtual console games, you know, and showed a little bit of footage, 10 seconds of footage, five, 10 seconds, something like that. You know, mention Earthbound's beginnings, mention Fire Emblem, the Sacred Stone, mention Star Fox Command and more, and you know, show those five and end it with, and many more. Then show off some indie games. Show off Typo Man, Soul Axiom, Mutant Mud Super Challenge, Fast Racing Neo. You know, show off five major indie games that are going to be really good. And end it with, and many more. And then talk about five major third-party games. Devil's Third, Fatal Frame, Lego Dimensions, Mighty Number no. 9, Guitar Hero Live. We didn't hear about any of these. You know, and if they would have just had a five minute section that showed like, you know, a few seconds of clips, you know, gameplay play footage for like five virtual console games, five indie games, and five third party games, that would have packed in more content, equating, translating to more value. People would have walked away and said, yeah, well, you know, there were some things I'm not interested in, but. Did you see all the games? I mean, there's a lot of great content there. That's where I think they missed the mark and why I said that they're not advertising. Where I think they were disappointing was, first and foremost, not talking about Zelda. To me, that was a big mistake. We know that they had the footage and they chose not to use it. Again, it's not necessarily about communicating to us Nintendo fans. Yes, it would be nice to have an update. I think that when we heard it was delayed and why, we knew that Star Fox was this year's holiday game and Zelda is next year's holiday game. I think not showing it just because it's not coming out, you know, by summer next year was a mistake. Okay, Reggie said that they didn't want to create frustration with the fans, but by not giving us that update, that's what created the frustration. And if he thinks that it would create frustration, Batman Arkham Knight made a huge splash last year at E3, tons of pre-orders, got delayed, still tons of pre-orders, and now it's garnering a ton of views from Let's Plays from big YouTubers. So 
never underestimate the power of a Nintendo franchise. They should have used that to their advantage to build in that content. The other places I think that were disappointing was Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. Now, I did fall to the speculation engine, and I'm going to apologize for that. I heard the rumors of an Animal Crossing for the Wii U, and I think, like most people, my mind immediately went to, you know, City Folk, New Leaf. I'm playing New Leaf on my 3DS, you know, my new 3DS, and I love it. And I hear Animal Crossing for the Wii U, I'm thinking that type of Animal Crossing, a real Animal Crossing game, and I'm thinking about all the cool ways that the gamepad could be incorporated to enhance the social aspects of that game, and then we see Amiibo Festival. If instead they would have showed that footage and then Reggie would have come out, and this is all about marketing, if Reggie would have come out and said something along the lines of, this holiday season, as your friends and family come together to celebrate, you can build on the good times with a ton of great mini-games in the fun and familiar theme of Animal Crossing with Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. And what's more is you only need a compatible Amiibo to enjoy the game as it's free to download. If he would have communicated it that way, if they would have pitched it that way, I think that it would have been received better. I think you would have had the people like me who had been like, eh, not a real Animal Crossing game, I'm not interested. And then you would have had, well, that would have been my reaction instead of going, this is not what we asked for. <laughs> so, um, and then you would have had the people who have been like, oh, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to have friends and my family, you know, holiday seasons, we're already having, this is going to be a great game to share and build on this. And it would really have been pitched as what Nintendo likes to do, and that's bring people together, shoulder to shoulder in the same room, sharing the good times. And if it was marketed that way more clearly, I think that it would have been received better. Same thing with uh, Federation Force. Show the footage, and instead of having four-player co-op in the Metroid Prime universe at the bottom, don't have anything there. Just show the footage. Then cut it off before you get to the whole blast ball thing and have Reggie or Tanabe or somebody come out and say something along the lines of, something might have sounded familiar in that clip because we would have been watching it going, what is this and why do I hear Metroid music? And if they came out and said something along the lines of something may have sounded familiar in that clip, and that's because in Federation Force, you and your friends assume the role in four-player co-op battling the space pirates in the extended universe of Metroid Prime, building on that classic trilogy's story. And then said, you know, and... To add to the fun, there's also Blast Ball. If they would have marketed it where Blast Ball was kind of like, hey, it's there. You want to play it? Cool. If not, whatever. It's just there. And then really focused on the game as an extended universe of the Metroid Prime trilogy. Um, more of a spinoff. And the point is to build story. You know, build upon that story and lay the foundation for something. Leave a little bit of mystery there. But focusing on building that story, that backstory, the gaps and the bridges and the foundation and all that, and then the four-player co-op, I think it would have been received better. You would have had people like me who would have been like, eh, I'm just not interested, you know? I look at that the same way I look at Four Swords, the same way I look at Triforce Heroes, the same way I look at Happy Homemaker and Amiibo Festival. They're not the real games of those franchises, so I'm just not interested, and hey, guess what? I don't have to buy it. But you would have had people go, that looks fun. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. I think it would have been received better if they would have done it that way. And, you know, th this is just where I, I think that they missed the mark. They had some disappointing moments and why I said they weren't advertising. However, when you look at the overall picture, there is way more good than negative. Let's start off with Sunday. They had the return of the World Championships. After more than two decades, this was a big deal and it was a lot of fun to watch and apparently it's coming back next year, so hopefully this will be a reoccurring theme for E3s down the road, which would give them a strong starting point. So, brilliant idea, a lot of fun to watch, and I want to take a moment to say congratulations to John Numbers for winning. That had to be an exhilarating moment in your life. 
something that you can carry throughout the rest of your life with pride. Nobody can ever take that away from you. No matter how many times they do the world championships, you'll always be the person who won the first one after more than 25 years of the original one. Just absolutely amazing. So, John, congratulations. You deserve the limelight. You deserve the recognition. So, you had that. And that's great. And it really flexed the muscles of Super Mario Maker, which, that's solid marketing there. Then you had the new content for Smash Brothers. Who other than Nintendo can release a game and six months later, it's still a big deal? That's so cool. That has to put a smile on your face. And then you had the eShop sales. Always great. You had the Best Buy events. Great, you know, reaching out, letting people get their hands on it, smart move. You had the indie game demos, smart move. That was great. I played several of them, awesome. Then you had Treehouse Live. They killed it. Again, Treehouse Live did a great job. Super Mario Maker, Xenoblade Chronicles, Star Fox Zero, Fatal Frame, you know, they covered that. Fast Racing Neo, they covered that. So. A lot of great things in Treehouse Live. They just killed it. And then you have the overall content for the Wii U, for the 3DS. When you look at it, let's just look at the Wii U alone. We are not in any way, shape, or form going to be wanting for quality or content this year. And this all leaks over into through spring of next year, but if we just look at the Wii U, Virtual Console Collection, just to name three, let's just name it, Earthbound's Beginnings, already out. Fire Emblem the Sacred Stone, coming out soon. Star Fox Command, coming out soon. Plus there's other eShop things, such as Art Academy, which, that's cool. Then you have the indie games, Typo Man, Soul Axiom, Mutant Mud Super Challenge, Fast Racing Neo. Just to name a few, there's many more of these games coming out both virtual console and indie, and carrying on into next year. And then we look at major releases. You have Skylander Superchargers, Disney Infinity, Mighty No. 9, Guitar Hero Live, Lego Dimensions, Lego Marvel Adventures, uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, Super Mario Maker, Fatal Frame, Devil's Third, Xenoblade Chronicles X, and Star Fox Zero. Just in major releases, that's 12 games. There's only six months left in this year. That's an average of two games a month. So when you look at the big picture, Nintendo had a very solid E3 presence. Sure, they didn't blow our minds like last year, but there's still a lot of great things, a lot of great things that they did, and plenty of great games coming out. So Nintendo still did a good job, and I think that we should all recognize that, and be excited about the coming months. As well as, again, congratulations, John Numbers. You deserve the recognition. And I think that Nintendo also deserves a lot of recognition for a solid performance this year. And that will do it for this episode of Strictly Nintendo. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.